But you've got all these military age Chinese personnel. We have interrogated some. They actually have military IDs where they are still current members of the Chinese military. So there are 13 police stations that we have uncovered in the United States that are controlled by the Chinese. What do I mean by controlled by the Chinese? They're not NYPD. They're not your town's police department. They are a Chinese police department. They have their own building, their own lease. They have Chinese officials who have Chinese law enforcement credentials here in this country. These people are. So we well, brought 340,000 over. We have no idea who they are. The ones we have vetted, Richard, here's the interesting statistics. We have over 100,000 that have crossed. Now, you remember, they will tell you, oh, we've only got 700,000 or maybe a million that have crossed. No, 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 no. The figure in the last two or three years alone is probably close to 10 million. Overall figure is close to 30 million illegal immigrants in this country. Out of the few that we have vetted, over 100,000 are on the terrorist watch list. Okay. Welcome to our channel. Today we delve into the issue of the open southern border, examining both its economic ramifications and the staggering statistics. We'll uncover how China has capitalized on this vulnerability, gaining access to American soil across multiple administrations. From the illicit trade of fentanyl to the establishment of Chinese police stations and biolabs on U.S. territory. We delve into the infiltration of Chinese personnel near critical American infrastructure. Lastly, we discuss how China aims to circumvent U.S. interference into the annexation of Taiwan. Hi everyone. Today our guest is Michael Letts, who is the founder, president and CEO of Invest USA. Michael, thank you very much for your time and welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much, Richard. It's always a privilege to be with you. We consider it an honor. Thank you for the opportunity. I'll give you a little bit Good. of background on myself. Invest USA is a 501c3 public charity established 32 years ago. Its main purpose is to protect those who protect us. We provide now active shooter vests for law enforcement officers and agencies all across the country and even in some parts of the world for uh, to make sure they can come home safely to their families. You know, we ask so much of these heroes. We ask them to put their lives on the line. Many of them pay the ultimate sacrifice. We just saw that a few days ago in NYPD with Jonathan Dillard. But we ask them to do so much. The least we can do is to give them the equipment that they need to come home safe to their families. I've been asked often, Richard, why do we have to raise money to do that? How come the agencies don't provide it themselves? So what, how is the situation at the, at the southern border? It's open. People keep coming in. How is the situation with immigration? Well, I've been down at the border quite a few times. We just got back from the border handing out vests uh, uh, to agents down there because we have so many agents on the border who don't have the necessary equipment. You know, one of the things that's scary is the drug cartels, and I have witnessed this, are shooting 50 caliber machine guns across the river. Now, they're not shooting them at the agents. They're shooting them over their heads just to let them know you don't have the power and the equipment necessary to protect yourself. And that is the message that's being sent. The open borders, let's talk about what are the, some of the problems, and then we'll talk about how China comes into this. What are some of the open problems that we see with the border? Well, now, Richard, almost daily, you see three or four stories across the country of illegal immigrants who are doing violent crimes against American citizens, killing, raping, stealing, whatever it may be. And then what we're finding out is not only are they illegal immigrants, but the vast majority of them have criminal records in their own countries. So what happened? Those countries, smart move on their part. Why should they pay for their maintenance and upkeep and their daily meals? Let them out, send them across the border to America, let America have to deal with them. Those are some of the consequences that we're seeing. The other consequence that Americans need to understand is it is costing us billions, not millions, billions of dollars to handle this situation. You say, well, what do you mean? Americans are paying to transport them here. We are actually 340 some thousand last year alone were flown in by this administration into the United States. They didn't cross the border. We went and got them. 
and we pay for an airline ticket to bring them back. Now, once they get here, they're not vetted. There's no way, Richard, I've served in the intelligence community as well, okay? There's no way you can vet 340,000 people on that issue alone. That's just air transportation. That's not the ones coming across the border. We don't even have close to being able to vet who these people are. So we brought 340,000 over. We have no idea who they are. The ones we have vetted, Richard, here's the interesting statistics. We have over 100,000 that have crossed. Now, you remember, they will tell you, oh, we've only got 700,000 or maybe a million that have crossed. No, 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 no. The figure in the last two, three years alone is probably close to 10 million. Overall figure is close to 30 million illegal immigrants in this country. Out of the few that we have vetted, over 100,000 are on the terrorist watch list. Okay, These are people are coming from Pakistan, Syria, Iran, Hamas, ISIS, Taliban. They're coming from Venezuela, Honduras. They're on the terrorist watch list. So we know for a fact that they have ties with international terrorist communities. We also know that Tens of thousands of the ones that we have arrest, uh, brought over and vetted have connections with the drug cartels. They are bringing in drugs, destroying America's youth, destroying America's young people. We also know that they have connections with human sex trafficking. You know, unfortunately, America has now become the leading institution in the world for launching human sex trafficking. We are a launching pad. I'm not saying that Americans have more human sex trafficking in this country, but we bring them in. Why is it so important to bring them to America? Because we don't do anything to screen our borders, Richard. Once you get them in, it's easy to put them on a plane, you know, kind of like we'll sell them here and then send them wherever they need to go. And it's very easy to get them out of the country. We are the primary exporter now in the, in the world of human sex trafficking. And then, of course, the other thing is there are a lot of military age personnel. We're going to talk about that as well that are coming across. So America is now realizing the tremendous damage that is happening by having open borders. There's a reason behind it. We're going to talk about that. But let me give one other example so that people clearly understand how this is affecting you and everybody else listening to this show. In New York City, now we'll use New York as an illustration, but remember what happens in New York happens around the country, okay? It's just in a greater uh, sense in New York City. Because of all the illegal immigrants, they can't afford it anymore. We're spending, remember I told you, billions of dollars. So New York City is taking, and you say, what are we spending it on? Well, let's talk about it real quickly. We have to pay to transport them here. Once they get here, we're having to pay to house them. Now, I want your listeners to know, we're not giving them a little tent, pup tent, tell them to go uh, sleep in the backyard. They're staying in five-star hotels. You and I are paying the tab. They're getting room service. They're getting maid service, all free on taxpayers' dime. They're also getting credit cards that the administration is paying for, over five to ten thousand dollars a month on those cards. More than a lot of Americans make by working forty hours a week for their incidental expenses. So you have New York City that no longer can afford it. What are they doing instead of taking the right policy decision? No illegals allowed. We're just it. We're done. You can't take another one. What they're doing is they're, how do we cut so we can afford more? Well, what are they going after? This year's budget alone with Eric Adams, and I I, I know Eric, uh, Mayor Adams. He used to be a police captain with NYPD. You would think he would know better than what I'm fixing to tell you. But what do they do? For next year's budget, they're going to cut 6,000 police officers' jobs to be able to use that money to help deal with the illegal immigrants. Now let's talk about China for just a moment. How does China play into this whole scenario? So they have over the years come up with some great strategies. First thing they did was they invested their money in political access. You take a look at, and we're talking about the president now, Joe Biden. This is no secret. The House Oversight Committee has documentation that Hunter Biden Joe Biden, through cell corporations, uh, eggshell corporations, has raised millions, have been given millions of dollars by the Chinese Communist government, the Chinese Communist Party. They have access to this administration. And it's not just this administration. They had access to the Obama administration. They had access to the Clinton administration. So they put money in, into politicians who are willing to help support policies that benefit them. 
What are some of the policies that they need? They have to have an open border. Now, why do they have to have an open border? Two reasons. First of all, the fentanyl drug, the drug crisis that this country is incurring, the chemicals made for fentanyl are all produced in China. So China is in a partnership with the drug cartels to sell their chemical products. They bring it to Mexico. Mexico mixes them up together. The drug cartels carry them across. Well, it's kind of hard to make money off of that. If you have a closed border, you can't get your product to market. So they're very interested in supporting policies that allow them to make, and they're making billions. Two things are happening with the Chinese. They're making money off the drugs. Second thing they're doing is they're killing off a large segment of a population, the younger population, who would be going into the military or going into law enforcement, first responders. So they're reducing the threat of law enforcement and the threat of our military. And then the other thing that they're doing is they're setting the stage to be able to control what's coming in the elections up ahead. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. So China has a vested interest in maintaining an open border. What are some of the other things that they're doing with this open border system? Well, let me tell you what we have discovered in law enforcement. And this is in Intel or law enforcement. I have, have both. First of all, some things your listeners may not be aware of. There are 13 police stations that we have uncovered in the United States that are controlled by the Chinese. What do I mean by controlled by the Chinese? They're not NYPD. They're not your town's police department. They are a Chinese police department. They have their own building, their own lease. They have Chinese officials who have Chinese law enforcement credentials here in this country. For what purpose? Why would they want to do that? Because they're gathering intel, first of all, on the American system. Because you remember, if they can hack into our NCIS system, they know everything about everybody. The second thing is there's a lot of Chinese that have migrated over to the United States, some legally, but they've come over because they're escaping communism. So they don't have very positive things to say about communism. Well, by having these police stations, they monitor what their dissidents have to say. And believe me, they send them a little message, hey, you still got family back home. You uh, knock it off or we're going to knock them off. So they're doing that. We have 13 and they've never have been closed. We raised enough concern to the Biden administration, the Department of Justice finally decided to do something on one of the stations. They got indictments to serve because this is a violation of our national sovereignty. They named four or five people. Well, then they tipped off these agencies. They were going to come get them in a week or so. So what happened? They're smart. They sent those agents home, replaced them with five new ones. So the warrants were worthless. They have done nothing with it since then. So you have that. The second thing we have discovered is we've also discovered 13 bio labs across this country, controlled and owned by the Chinese. So what are the bio labs? These little laboratories have all kind of viruses. We have inspected them, done nothing to close them. But we have inspected them. They have malaria. They have COVID. They have typhus. We can go on and on. We don't know everything they have in these labs. Now, I want you to think for just a minute, Richard, if they decided to release some of these uh, elements into a city of the size where these are located, they could devastate a population in the city overnight. So that's the second thing. Third thing is I told you that we have picked up over 20,000 Chinese military-age individuals crossing from the southern border and some from the northern border that have come in, over 20,000 that we know of. Probably the figure is more like 40 to 50,000. Why would they come over? We're not talking about the Chinese individual with his wife and small kids saying, I want to escape communism. We're talking about single male adults mm -hmm. of military age. Is that it when we this have year only? Is it only 2024 or previous year or this year? No, it's uh, previous year, 2023, that we had 20,000. Okay. We had it before. Okay. And then this year, they're pouring in at a higher rate than it was before. And I'm going to give you some <laughs> illustrations on that that happened just in the last day. But you've got all these military age Chinese personnel. We have interrogated some. They actually have military IDs where they are still current members of the Chinese military. So we have invading forces on American soil. Now, what is our country doing with these? What is the Biden administration doing with them? 
Well, you remember, here's how it works, you know, when you cross the border illegally. If you're apprehended, now remember, if you get across and you don't get apprehended, you do whatever you want to. But if they're apprehended, you would think we immediately turn around and send you back. Oh, no, that's not the way it works. If you're apprehended, we get your information. We find out where do you want to go, Richard? We pay to send you there, okay? Then we tell you, by the way, when you get there, as soon as you can, look up the nearest naturalization court and get a date scheduled so that they can hear your argument as to whether you should be here for political reasons for asylum or whether you need to be sent back. Now, here's the date on that. If you did that, which 99.9% .9 don't, but if you did that, it will take from five to 10 years for the court to hear your case. So you're here for a long time, regardless of whether you go by the law or not. So we're shipping them all across the country. Interestingly, when we begin to track where they're being sent to, most of them are in cells next to key infrastructure uh, findings or infrastructure locations in this country. Power plants, water plants, sewer plants, things along those lines. So what's the significance on that? If something were to occur, they are all positioned to be able to destroy our infrastructure within a matter of hours, Richard. Imagine for just a moment what America would be like with huge sections without power. And I'm not talking about you lose your power for five minutes and then it comes back on. We're talking about being out of power for months, maybe a year. Studio Asia is an independent channel. I am neither looking for sponsors nor asking you for donations. I value much more your comment under this interview. It means a lot to me, a lot. Subscribing and sharing helps me to be promoted by YouTube. I will appreciate it very, very much. Well, here's what we have posed. You have China in terrorist cells all across the country at infrastructure points. That's the first thing. Second thing that you have is you have China bringing in, making money off fentanyl, helping to continue to destroy our young people and our military-age people. Third thing that you have so you have China has all these bio labs in a position where they can destroy hundreds of thousands of Americans overnight. And then the fourth thing is you have them getting all this intel coming back in from their police stations. We have gotten to the point to where this administration, current administration, is owned by the Chinese government. They're doing what the Chinese government is telling them to do. Why? Because the Chinese government has given them millions and millions in fact we estimate from the oversight committee over a hundred million dollars has gone to the biden and to its family china has already said i want taiwan taiwan is in our is in our sights we have already said well we have always committed to taiwan that we would defend them so now all china has to do is say okay we're going to go get taiwan that issue is settled now you can raise a little ruckus but do nothing or you could try to intervene and suddenly all your infrastructure that we have people in place to destroy, suddenly these bio labs, things get released. It will hurt your country a lot worse than you ever imagined. Okay, so where do you see this going? Like, uh, can, can maybe the election save the situation? Let's say Trump comes to power. Is he able to turn it around? Quite frankly, there is hope there. But I don't see us being able to wait till November. Let me give you some other things that have just occurred. The President Biden has just released his budget. A key component of the budget was supposed to be, we are constructing new aircraft carriers. Aircraft carriers, if you have any military background, are pivotal to defensive positions in the world. That is crucial to be able to keep our independence and our seas clear and crucial to stand up to China. Interestingly enough, in Biden's budget, the first thing he did was cut all the money for those aircraft carriers. So you see, we don't have time to even to wait till November. He is doing so much damage now. Why are the open borders? What's the other key thing? Is the other key component of the open borders is by allowing these illegals to come in. What do they do? They take their information. They move them to states where they need additional numbers to give them more Democratic seats in the House so they can keep control of Congress. You remember, the more population you have in a state, the, no the greater the number of electoral votes that you possess for the Electoral College. 
So if they can get enough of them in the right states, shift the electoral college count, they can guarantee that a Democrat maintains the presidency for generations to come. They change the power of Congress, they can guarantee that Democrats control Congress for generations to come. So they are hell-bent on keeping these borders open to make sure that they can control the elections in November. So what we have to do is a number of things. And that's where Invest is so involved. Why are we so involved? Because you remember our purpose is to support and protect our first responders. You remember they want to use crime as a way to paralyze us with fear. So how do we counteract that? I'm telling every American to do a couple of things. First of all, make sure you own a firearm and you know how to use it. Won't do you any good if you don't know which end you're supposed to point. You know, you make sure you know how to use it. Second of all, I tell every American all across the country, every police department, every sheriff's department, and every state has either a police reserve, a sheriff's reserve, or a state guard or a state militia. It's all volunteer. Make sure that you volunteer a few hours of your time a month to learn how to get your credentials, to be a part of protecting your area. They want violent crime. They want the numbers to go up. That's why they're not funding police at all. What benefit does it do to them to, to have the violent crime go up? Because they're going to come back to you, Richard, and say, look, violent crime is fixing to destroy you. Your city and state police aren't worth anything. They're, they, they're, they're all gone. They've been defunded. But don't be fearful because the federal government is here. We're going to take care and protect you. By the way, and they've already said this publicly. I'm not making this up. This is their, their official position. By the way, violent crime is caused by guns. They don't say it's caused by the person shooting the gun. It's caused by guns. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all the guns away. There won't be any more crime. Okay. My, my last question. What is it you expect in 24-25? What do you think could happen? So what do I feel like needs to be done? Starting today, there needs to be what the Constitution provides for. The Constitution allows for a military tribunal. We're just now talking about that. Military tribunal is a jury set up of junior military grade officers to look at the evidence. They have 30 days. They render a decision and they decide what whether you broke the law and then what the consequences are based on the law, and then they implement it. They don't send it over to the Department of Justice and say, look, you need to go arrest this person. They do it themselves. We are at the point, why do I say a military tribunal? Richard, when your top people are corrupt, your president, your vice president, your attorney general, your heads of agencies, they think they're above the law. And quite frankly, they don't think anybody can hold them accountable. The only people that can is the military. So we need to have a military tribunal before the election. People need to be held accountable. Then in November, we need to have a turning point in this country, a real revival. If you want to live in a free country, you have to participate. And by participating, that means realizing that the government has sold us out. They're corrupt. We're going to have to defend our families, our neighborhoods, and our homes. We're going to have to show them that we can do that, and we will do that. The same as our forefathers did in 1776 when they were threatened and they said the only way to, to, to deal with this threat is we will defend what is precious to us. We have to have the same mindset. I know we have it across this country. We're all Americans. We all come from the same stock. We have the same patriotism that runs through everybody's vein. But we have a small minority segment that don't have not only don't have patriotism, but have one thought in mind. And that's to be used to destroy this country so that it removes the final obstacle for there to be one world government and for them to control us all. Thank you, Richard, so much for this opportunity. Thank you, Michael, for your time. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless America. I have so many other explosive interviews on this and similar topics. Please check out my channel.